old man plumber died. Christopher. Yeah, I, I just saw that. Yeah. Yeah. And he won. It's a good run. You can't be that upset when someone. Well, he just won his Oscar like five years ago. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's great. You know, he he was nominated, and I think Franklin Jello was nominated the same year. Yeah. Either him or Max Idaho, someone who was just as old as he was, and I really wanted his acceptance speech to be, "I won the bet." You know, when I die and go to hell, I really will be upset if Lucifer does not look like Baron Von Trapp. I love that about Sound of Music, that the romantic lead looks so sinister throughout the entire thing. Every time he smiles, it's like, oh, I'm imagining you burning right now. How are you doing? Good. I think this is the first cold open where I have not said a word. <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. Thank you for joining me here in The Basement for our longest-running tradition on this show. Since episode two, we've celebrated Valentine's Day with a romantic movie. Now, what subjects have we covered in the past? Courtship in The Notebook. A wedding in My Big Fat Greek Wedding and divorce in The Awful Truth. But there's a crucial period there that we have not explored, and that is marriage. And I hope you'll join me in a hearty buona fortuna as we explore marriage Italian style. Oh! Oh, this is a new one to me. Released in 1964, M.I.S. was directed by Vittorio De Sica and stars Sofia Loren and Marcello Mastriani. This is the most Italian movie ever made just based off of those three names. The film was based on the play Filumena Marturano by Eduardo de Filippo. Matrimonio alla Italiana, as it was known in Italian, spoken better than I just did, was the second highest grossing Italian film in 1964, right behind Sergio Leone's A Fistful of Dollars. It was nominated for two Oscars, Best Foreign Language Film, naturally, and Best Actress for Sofia Loren. You haven't seen this. I have not seen this, no. I don't think I've ever seen Mastriani in color. I don't know if I've ever seen Loren in Italian. For your gift today, I thought I would get you something Italian. Hey. Pocket bocce. Bocce ball. You can teach your sons about their Italian heritage by teaching them this game. Well, pedal your bicicletta over to the old leather couch and settle down with this old married couple, as we watch Marriage Italian Style. Watch it! That's Italian for Charlie Bridge. Oh, this is the quality of the film. Oh no, this looks terrible. Did they shoot this on scotch tape? <laughs> Donna Filomena is sick. She's dying. Don Domenico must be informed. <laughs> this area is known as the calm section of town. <laughs> he owns a bakery and he's a hotshot businessman in Italy. <laughs> 200 million lira in cash? That's like $45. A doctor is called. He teaches comp lit. He's gonna save your life. Bring me a priest. I'm about to die. The only priests I know are the kind that are actually male strippers. <laughs> Headbutt! He remembers back to the day he first met Filomena. It's during the war. Why are there donkey noises every time I take off my pants? <laughs> and he's in a brothel. Air Raid ain't gonna stop me from brothelin'. And he sees this meek little woman hiding in a room. It's Filomena. 17 years old, shocked and terrified. I can't go downstairs, I'm too ashamed. Come to Philomena. Philomena. Ba, ba, da, da. Philomena. Ba, ba, da, da. Two years later, in San Sebastiano. MP, that's your first and middle initial. That's it, that's it, that is it. He sees her on a bus, and boy has she changed. I'll give you a ride to Naples. Napoli. Napoli. They call it Napoli. Oh. That guy's got the best job in Italy. They get caught in a rainstorm. And we're out of gas. And we have a flat tire. And it's too dark to drive. So he pulls over to this weird house. And there's nobody home. Let's go inside and make love. 
But then the people who own the house come home and what a scandal. Oh, Italians. People in the bed, you know. Uh, <laughs> you can keep those sheets. More time passes. Domenico and Filomena are seeing each other. And she calls him Don Dumi. He's going to take her to the races, but she's wearing a dress that is a little scandalous. And he says, let's go upstairs and put you in something more modest. The races, you know, the seriousness of the racetrack. Your winner is the one guy in the race. He will be paying out zero lira. By the dawn's early light. <laughs> They're dating, but Philomena is still a prostitute. When you leave, it's, uh, you know any man can just come upstairs and do his business. And then there's that guy, the upstairs neighbor, always with his ululating. You know, this does bother me a bit. I'll get you this apartment. It's really nice. But then you won't have to do the prostituting anymore. She doesn't have to do the prostituting. All right. <laughs> Slaughterhouse outside. <laughs> <laughs> this is your place. You sign the lease. It's in your name. She signs the lease. God damn, she is built like a brick shit house. <laughs> <laughs> in separate beds with resentment in between us. <laughs> Wakanda? She just said Wakanda. Later on, there's some shady business. Turns out the woman who lived here just died. La loggia è già occupata dalla qui presente signorina Marturano. So, and, and, and. I don't know what that's all about. That's like, that's Italian property stuff. Italian property law. Not my area of expertise. More time passes and Don Domenico has made her the manager of his bakery. He keeps coming and going. He'll be gone for months on end. He's not taking it seriously and he's definitely not going to ask her to marry him. I got an idea. You want to meet my mom? Come and meet my Italian mother. You will never live up to her standards. <laughs> I guarantee it. I live with my mother. She is sick. You'll have to forgive me. My impending death is acting up. You do the job. You take care of my mother. You can live in the house. And then at night, we get to sleep in the same bed. It's ju it's just the same as though we're married, but it's not legal. So she basically becomes nursemaid to this dying old woman. Luckily, she dies. She's gotten older as time passes. A lot of time is passing in this movie. Time's all over the place. And Don Domenico continues to have these affairs. Surprise. I just have the word surprise. I don't know. <laughs> I le uova di Pasqua. Si. Da sorpresa. Smack. We're back to the present. Philomena is still dying. Padre. <sighs> <laughs> I still don't know if this is a comedy. But Don Domenico, her last wish before she leaves this earth is to be married to you. This priest is here to give last rites, but he can give marriage rites. She's going to be dead any second now. This is fine. And so the priest marries them. I know what's going on here. This is a comedy. I know what's going on here. <laughs> I just love wedding funeral combos. <laughs> bravo, bravo, figliolo. Hai fatto un'opera buona. You performed a boner? You performed a boner. No, you will have a happiness in your pants front. I hope she'll die happy. Wait, what? La commedia. <laughs> She's out of bed? It was all a trick? And now I'm married to her? Don Domenico flies into a rage. And then she gets a flashback. What's the Italian word for Rashomon? She remembers back in the days when she was in the whorehouse. When you walked into the joint. She has a son. He's being taken care of by these nice people on a pig farm. This completely other woman. Completely. She's a completely other woman. Completely other. He has some intestinal distress. They're using this kind of folksy remedy on him. He shits in a bowl. And it works. Listen. <laughs> it worked. Listen. <laughs> Stop it. I don't want to hear that noise anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, boy. She's hiding secrets from D.D. She goes to see the nuns with some buns and bread. 
she's got two other sons with the nuns. That doesn't sound right. So she has three sons that she has. Buongiorno, signor. Buongiorno, signor. The Italian military drafts some young. And flashback. We're back in the kitchen. They're having a huge argument. I got three sons. How do you like me now? E non vaga la faccia che non so figlia te. They're gonna move in here with us, and we're gonna be a family. Don Domenico wakes up the next day. Filomena is reorganizing the house. Ti faccio chiamare dall'avvocato mio. The lawyer informs her that she's committed fraud. She's married him under false pretenses, and that's illegal. Io non ho capito niente. I haven't either. They're speaking Italian. <laughs> you know what? Fine. Annul the marriage. I don't care. Alfred, Viraka! Bring me your head and the rest of your body. She's brought the boys to the house. They don't know who each other are. Vai giù a lavare la macchina, tu cammini. That. Hey, what, what? Voi siete figli a me. Now imagine someone going dun, dun, dun. I am going to tell your first girlfriend a funny story about cherries. And let me tell you about my childhood. Ooh, it was bad. Living in the slums. Okay, guys, this part of the movie gets real talky. This is the part of the movie that's gotten really sad and serious. That's not always so easy for the, the two jokesters here on the couch. Don Domenico comes in with his lawyer. They got the papers. She signs the papers. And by the way, one of those boys is actually yours. And I'm not going to tell you which one. Ah, the romance of the racetrack. Ah, the French. She gets into his head. He tries to investigate the dates and he does math. Still can't figure this out. They have a big confrontation up on this uh, hillside. I forget what happens in that first one. That... They're just talking and talking and talking. They and talking. talk, yeah, they talk. You gotta tell me that you're lying. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I'm gonna run away now. He goes to where the kids work. Oh! <laughs> Which one is most like me? Well, this one likes cars. He could be my son. This one has hands that are like my hands. He could be my son. He meets with Philomena on the Mount Vesuvius. I'm going out of my mind. You gotta tell me which kid is mine. And uh, things get physical. Look, they're killing each other right there. And then they kiss. Oh, yes. <laughs> Buona fortuna. I love you, dummy. You big dummy. Don Domenico is going to marry her again with no ruses. All right, kids, fight to the death. The survivor is my son. Philomena shows up late. They still do the deed. One of the boys says, Buongiorno, Baba. Good. Uh, but then the other two says, Buongiorno, Buongiorno Baba. Baba. Ah, he still doesn't know who his real son is. Don Domenico, I must tell you the truth. None of these boys are your sons. They are all the sons of the Italian actor Marcello Mastriani. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's an Italian marriage. Italian style. Sto piangendo, don't me. We're over the rainbow, Italians cry. Marriage, Italian stuff. Comedy, drama. Comedy, yes. drama. Comedy, drama. Still, I don't have the answer. It's a comedy. It's a comedy. Because it ends with a wedding. There we go. That's it, a classic it, definition. It is a very somber comedy. <clears throat> a yes. sombrity, if you will. Yes. A lot of that probably has to do with De Sica. He made one of the saddest movies ever made with The Bicycle Thief. Yeah, but he also made a comedy with Peter Sellers, I think, that Neil Simon wrote. Did he do a lot of comedies? He didn't do a lot of comedies, okay. but he had it in his person. Because I could see this being a more upbeat comedy but the rage that explodes out of Mastriani really gets ugly yeah instead of like what did you do to me mm -hmm. oh! I'm married now yeah and yeah exactly he's gotta like buy wallpaper or whatever yeah so it's very intense and it's very sad and uh not like any comedy I've ever seen but the comic premise of one of you are my sons and how desperate he gets with that that is very fun but at the same time, it is interspersed in, my father abused me, and now I became a prostitute. The trick mm -hmm. to get him to marry her in the first place, that was just getting him to bite the hook. 
Yes. The information about the suns sets the hook. Yeah. To use fishing parlance, mm-hmm. of which I have a questionable <laughs> proficiency with. Much of the movie is reeling. And then she reels him in. She reels him in. Yeah. Him in. Tell me who it is. I'm not going to tell you. Tell me who it is. Sophia Loren, she got an Oscar nomination for this. Mm Well-deserved. I think it's an amazing performance. She was 30 when she did this movie. Really? 30 years old. And to be able to do that range of Mm -hmm. age, and not just age, but experience, and how your personality changes, she goes from 17 to 40. Yeah. Just to be able to carry that age, it's more than just painting bags under your eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, she's she's got such a maturity and such a world weariness. Someone who's 30 years old who can pull that off. And the fact that she allows herself to be stripped down so much. She was counted as one of the most beautiful women in the world. International sex symbol. Yes. She goes the the full gamut in this. Yeah. It's a shame that this DVD had such a terrible transfer. Yeah. Fortunately, after about 10 or 15 minutes, like taking a dip in cold water you get used to it and you don't care anymore yes and also this isn't a movie that's very beautiful no with you know big sweeping vistas or anything it's It's like oh naples just kind of rooms and dirty streets and things like that so a bad transfer is not quite so heartbreaking so there was a film called divorce italian stuff which came out three years before this really it's also starred Marcello Mastroianni, no Sofia Loren, completely different story, and he got an Oscar nomination for that role. The movies must have had enough of an influence in the United States because in the 70s there was a TV show called Love American Style. But ba 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 Love American Style. Ah. Doing it in red, white, and blue. Hoo hoo hoo. Yeah, we <laughs> and we watched a lot of that show when we were kids. It was just always on TV. The original Happy Days was an episode of Love American Style. Yeah, yeah. I do think that a lot of this movie has been lost in translation. It's been lost because we don't know what Italy was like for those 20 years from the, you know, the fall of Mussolini up to the early 1960s. There's a lot of little milestones in there that I don't think we'd be able to recognize. During the war, the prostitution was so huge. What does that mean for the women of Italy? We don't know this. Well, and also simply as males, we have no idea about the life of a prostitute mm-hmm. and the day-to-day of it and the hopelessness of it. You can have a certain amount of empathy, but you're only able to understand so much of that experience. We can understand just the endless indignities that he heaped upon on her year after year every single scene there's some sort of slap to the face i don't like dropping you off here uh you can't dress like that you're gonna be my mom's nursemaid until she's dead and, and then you can't come out of the funeral that's something that we can understand so in a way he wants to eat his cake and not have his cake mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes it is weird that it's a movie that takes place in italy and nothing about it makes me think Oh, I need to go to Italy right now. Well, it's not a glamorous story at all. No. It's a very cynical love story. He's saying that um, an Italian marriage is a very cynical thing in general. Right. Or he's cynical about the entire concept. It's an arrangement. So I really have to wonder what was going on in De Sica's life at this time. He was still upset about his stolen bicycle. Yeah. Well, that was marriage Italian style, and now it's time for a little honeymoon known as Seen It. Seen It. Our theme for Seen It today is romance. Tony Mayer writes, The Shop Around the Corner. Seen it. Hey, Tony. Seen it. Hi, Tony. I always think that this is a Frank Capra film. It is an Ernst Lubitsch film. Yes. So it has the Lubitsch touch, as it's known. Actually, this movie doesn't really have the Lubitsch touch as much as other ones does, because the Lubitsch touch is, I think, has to do with implied sex. That's happening. Oh, okay. The touch. The feel. (laughs) Of Lubitsch. I think maybe the reason why I think it's Frank Capra is because, like It's a Wonderful Life, it's a Christmas movie only in the last 20 minutes of the movie. <laughs> and Jimmy Stewart's in it. Yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've seen this a couple times. It's a very sweet movie. It was remade as You've Got Mail. Yes, that's right. It's the classic, these two people hate each other, but they don't realize that... They've fallen in love with each other. It also has some darkness. There's a suicide attempt. James Clemenhage. Love Actually. I thought the movie was fine, but didn't see what the fuss was all about. Honestly, a lot of it felt contrived. Seen it. Not seen it. It's a romantic comedy, and those typically are built on contrivances. 
As far as romantic comedies go, you could probably do a lot worse than Love Actually. It's basically the shortcuts of rom-coms. Mm -hmm. You've got about eight different plots going on, and you see all the threads that connect them. You don't have time to spend with one plot line for too long because it switches around. And also, they're not all romantic plots. There's one of them involving this has-been singer, which is just pure comedy. Mm -hmm. There's the story with Emma Thompson, which gets quite sad. A lot of it has really stuck with me over the years. Particularly, there's a bit in the beginning. Hugh Grant is doing a little voiceover. I believe that the motivating force in people's lives is love. And I can prove this. Because on 9-11, when the planes were going down and people were t using their cell phones, they weren't calling pe someone and telling them how much they hate them. <laughs> they were calling their loved ones. Yeah. It can be seen as a rather tasteless thing, but to bring up 9-11, yeah. but it works. And I, I hope it doesn't seem tasteless that I laughed at that, but I, I found it, I, I laughed because it's like, oh, that's true. That's, that's I've never heard that said. Ryan writes, Bound, 1996 American neo-noir crime thriller film written and directed by the Chowskis. In their feature film directorial debut, Seen It. Seen It. This is a crime thriller, but at, at its heart, there is a very strong romance. And also, this is one of those movies where they come along so seldom, you are blindsided at how erotic they are. This is the sexiest movie ever made. <laughs> yeah. I, it is. I didn't know what I was getting into. Yeah. And I watched this thing, I'm like, oh my god. Hopefully not with your parents. No. It is a very good crime story. It's got it Joe is. Pants. Yeah, Joey Pantoliano. Once it gets going, it's going. The movie is relentless. Yeah. Mr. Sandpaper says... Hey, have you seen Palm Springs yet? I quite enjoy it. I think I enjoy it. I think I enjoy it more than Groundhog's Day, which is saying quite a bit. Seen it. Seen it. So Palm Springs is Groundhog Day. Basically. It's self-inflicted Groundhog Day, mm -hmm. and there's multiple Groundhogs. I found it weird. It's, it's the movie Groundhog Day. It's the same movie. <laughs> but it's never really acknowledged. No one acknowledges it. You keep expecting someone in the movie to say, hey, it's like that movie Groundhog Day. Well, you have to remove these things. Yeah, I know, I know. But yeah. I, I, when I was watching it, I thought it was weird. I understand it now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I love this movie. I, I just want to say right off the top, I love that it starts in media rest. Sandberg has been caught in the loop at the beginning of the movie for, for who knows how long. So you get to learn the rules from someone who's been playing by the rules for decades. Why they didn't call the movie Palm Springs Eternal, I have no idea. <laughs> If you would like to go to a website American style, you can visit our website, welcometothebasementshow.com. All of our episodes are there, every gosh dang one of them. And there are also PayPal donation buttons that you can click on to donate to help support this show with a one-time or rolling monthly donation. Has anyone done that anytime recently? One of our donors is Brian. He didn't leave any comments, but he gave us a very generous donation and we appreciate it. And since Brian didn't leave a comment, this is a note from Talia. Hey, Zach. Up in Toronto, happy birthday. Thanks for watching our show so much. Yeah. Check out our unboxing show, which comes out this coming Friday. We open our mail. Lots and of strange boxes this week. And see the interesting things that people send us. Won't you join us for that? Yeah, of course you will. Uh, we watched... We watched Marriage Italian Style, and now you can watch this. To can't. Go! E fammi sentire, a conosci Monasteria Santa Chiara. The Monastery of Santa Chiara, the best monastery in the West. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! The Monastery of Santa Chiana. <sighs>